Now our time is running short. Without further ado, I'd like to introduce you our Secretary General, Mr. Lim. Good evening, voters of Tampanese GRC. I am very honored to be addressing you on this very last day of the campaign. The NSP has run a very good campaign. We have run a campaign that has addressed the issues of Singaporeans. We have run on issues that we have come across in our walkabouts, in our outreach. And I want to contrast our campaign with that of the PAP. You know, before this election started, they imagined up an issue, the town council issue. They told Singaporeans that this election was going to be about the town council. And so they spent the first two or three days battling it out with the Workers' Party over the town council. That's true, that's true, that's true. But what has become of the town council issue now? They got no topic to talk. That's right, right? It has died a natural death. And why? Why has it died a natural death? Because it was a non-issue. Singaporeans were not interested in that issue. And then, after three or four days, they then told Singaporeans, now let's come back and talk about national issues. Because the national issues are what Singaporeans are concerned about. And what are the national issues at stake today? It is about foreigners taking away Singapore jobs. Singaporean jobs. It is about overpopulation. It is about the cost of living, the relentless rising cost of living. And it is about non-return of CPF personal life savings. A complete breach of promise by a government and there they go about lecturing the public. Don't elect dishonest opposition members. Don't elect opposition members who cannot keep their promise. And they breach a sacred promise to Singaporeans. You know, ladies and gentlemen, Sorry for this little interruption. I actually have a loud voice, so I don't really need the loud the, the, the mic, you know? <laughs> You know, you know what is the favorite phrase of the PAP today? No one left behind. You know where they got that phrase from or where they borrowed that phrase from? It was from a phrase, it was a phrase that the Republicans used under George Bush in 2001. When they passed a legislation called No Child Left Behind. So the PAP borrowed that it has become their favorite phrase today, no one left behind. But I'm telling you Singaporeans today, many of our countrymen are being left behind by the PAP. And many of the statements made by the PAP today are what I call platitudes, hollow statements. 
And let me read out to you what the Prime Minister said yesterday at the Fullerton Square Red or the UOB Plaza lunchtime rally. And I want to read out to you what he said. He said, he identified three elements of politics in Singapore that should be retained even as it evolves. One, it had to be honest and clean. These are the PAP standards, and these also have to be the opposition standards, he said, adding that whatever colours a, par whatever colors a party might wear, it also had to be white or clean. We agree with that, don't we? Yeah. That politics have to be clean. Yes. Yes. Let's go on next to what he said. Two, the government has to take care of its people today and also for tomorrow. And that is where I take issue with the Prime Minister. Because to me, the government today is not taking care of its own people. If it was taking care of its own people, we would not be having the problems we are having with the retrenchment of our highly educated middle class professionals. You know, I want to read you something else. I brought the newspaper with me today. At one of the rallies last night, Lim Sui Se said, You know what he said? He said, with regard to those professionals who were being retrenched, who were bearing the brunt of competition from foreigners in the workplace, he said, I feel their frustration and stress. You tell me whether this is a hollow statement, a platitude. It is their policies which are causing that Singaporean middle income professional who has lost his job, frustration and stress. I have asked repeatedly in this campaign, from the very first time I debated the PAP MPs on nomination day, and I asked Denise Pua and Lawrence Wong, what is your answer to that Singaporean? What are the safeguards the government has put in place to protect that Singaporean job? There was never an answer. They started to give an answer saying, while we have in place this fair, that fair, you know, people can retrain and all that, but you are not even protecting the Singaporean job in the first place. Isn't the solution simple? Isn't the solution this? that in every job, that Singaporean should have priority. Tell me what is so difficult with that. We are not saying we cannot have foreigners in our workplace. None of us would be that xenophobic to make that statement. But we are saying that if you really care for that Singaporean, you will see to it that he doesn't lose his job. That is how you care for your people. You know, we ask a Singapore man when he turns 18 to serve our country for two years, to bear arms for our country for two years. But that Singapore young man when he sees his father losing a job to a foreigner, not because his father is any less talented, but simply because that foreigner is cheaper to employ, are we instilling in that Singapore young man a pride for our country? Are we telling him that you have a great future? No. And worse still, ladies and gentlemen, there are many Singapore young graduates today who cannot find a job in our own country.
You know, when I was doing a walk about two days ago, I came across a lady. I do not know whether she's here tonight. She lives in Tampines. And she told me this story that her son, who has first class honors from the university, first class honors, has not been able to find a full time job for two years. And that all the jobs he applied for were always taken up by the foreigner. I think it is a very sad reflection of where we have come as a society. And instead of addressing the problem, instead of addressing the problem, you have a education minister who yesterday night told the Singaporeans, well, we'll give you a fantastic education, but that is not the end all of it. We must have the jobs in place. If you allow our country to, to go to ways, there won't be jobs. We are not asking, we are not saying that our country will go to waste, all right? But in the first place, make sure that there is a job for that Singapore graduate. In no other first world country will you find a foreigner being able to take away a local's job as easily as in Singapore. You go to America, you go to any developed country in Europe, for example, Britain, for France, you go to Japan, you go to Australia, you see whether you can take away the job of the local. The government is there protecting the job of the local. But in Singapore, there is no safeguard. Let's come to the issue of the CPF. And let's see whether the government really cares for its people. You know, a few days ago, the Prime Minister said, well, the opposition will never tell you at their rallies that on a retirement account, the CPF earns you 6%, better than if you go to DBS or UOB, all right? And they will never tell you that because if they were to tell you that, you won't vote for them. The CPF returns between two and a half to 4%, to the best of my knowledge, on your ordinary account. It returns 5% on the special account maybe 6% as the Prime Minister says on your retirement account. It's our money, our money. Our I'm telling you even at 6%, money. it is nothing to shout about. Our money. In fact, it is a low return. The Australian superannuation funds, the equivalent of our CPF, and they are private. Three years ago, returns close to 17% on average on retirement funds for Australians. Two years ago, when the market wasn't so good, it was still returning over 13%. Last year, which was a bad year, it was returning 8.5% on average. You tell me whether the 25 to 4% returns you are getting on your CPF is anything to shout about. And then we have Tamasek, who in March of this year reported 19% profits. 19. And we know that Tamasek and GIC use the CPF money to invest. I suggest to you that if the government really cared for its people, it would be returning you much better returns on your CPF. But even if the CPF were to return you 30% or 
at the end of the day, that money is your money. The government has absolutely no legal ground to withhold that money from Singaporeans. And you know what's the reason it gives you for withholding the money? It tells you, well, some people take the money, they go off to Batam, they squander it, they have a second family there. Yeah. You know, what are the figures? How many Singaporeans do that? Are there thousands? Are there thousands of them? Are there maybe 20 of them? Or a hundred of them? What is the evidence? I am a lawyer. And I base every argument on evidence. Or I should base every argument on evidence. Because if not, the judge in court will tell me, you're wasting my time. But till today, the government has not been able to tell the Singapore people how many people squander their monies. That's true. And I think the figures are very, very low. I think the figures are not even 5% of the population. And so the government is penalizing 95% of the population because of what a small number of people do. And as our president, Mr. Tio, had already explained in Chinese, in Mandarin, there is a very simple solution, even if you want to take that position. There is a safeguard you can put in place. And they knew how to put this safeguard for the casinos. They said that if family members knew of the gambling problems, the gambling tendencies of their next of kin, they could put up a case to bar him from the casino. Our proposal is simple. If you have a next of kin whom you think is going to squander his money, you put up the case with the authorities that he not be allowed to withdraw his entire CPF sum and that the government pay him out monthly. Isn't that a fair solution? And you know, worse still, ladies and gentlemen, worse still, what is the consequence of withholding people's CPF monies? So many, so many Tampanese residents have come up to us. Our Muslim friends, they tell us, I was looking forward to 55 and taking my CPF money so that I can go on the Hajj. And that is the most important obligation in my life. And today I cannot. I have to wait until I'm 65. And I hope I'm around at 65. We are not playing around with religion to win votes as Mr. Masago said last night. But when a government is preventing its citizens from practicing their religion properly, I think we have a duty to speak up. We had another, we have other residents who came up to us who said, I am 60 today. I cannot work anymore. I am hardly getting by. But I cannot access money from my CPF. What, what do you want this person to do? Turn to his child? Sue his child in court? You know, 15 years ago, the government passed a legislation that allowed parents to sue their child, their children, for maintenance. I want to know today how many parents have actually done that. How many parents actually have the heart 
to go and sue their children for maintenance when their children can hardly get by themselves. I think I'm running short of time. I hope, ladies and gentlemen, when you vote on the 11th of September, vote for the NSP and ask yourself this question. Ask yourself this question. Is the present government for me or against me? Is the present government on my side or on the other side? I think if you ask yourself these questions, you come to a definitive choice, and that choice will be your vote. Thank you very much. Good night. Thank you. So, dear residents of Tampines GRC, on this note, we would like to say this to PAP. Should you take lightly of NSP, you will be sorry. For we are the tigers you are looking for in the parliament. Come September 11, dear voters, vote NSP into the parliament and we will be watching them and chasing them to make sure they serve Singaporeans. So who should you vote for? Can you say it loudly one more time? Who should you vote for? Thank you, residents of the Manager GRC. Please vote LSP. Thank you.